So let's start with these series of videos which are going to look at people's health. Now the people's health unit is a study of health from the year 1250 to the present day and it's important that we see this as a chronology, as a timeline because people's health looks at four main periods of time. Now it actually doesn't look at ancient history but I wanted to put ancient history in this timeline so you understand where the four periods start with. Now ancient history, and I'm using quite a loose definition here, really runs up to about the year 1000. And we call the year 1000 to 1500 the Middle Ages. This is a time of castles and knights and kings. That is the first period that we will look at in people's health, the Middle Ages, also known as the medieval period. The next period of time that people's health looks at is the early modern period and the early modern period runs from the year 1500 to the year 1750. This is the time of the Tudor monarchs, the, the start of things like the slave trade, the start of towns in England. The next period of time runs from 1750 until 1900 and that is the period of time that we call the industrial period and the industrial period is the time of factories and the people uh, who are industrialists and factory owners like Brunel who you can see pictured here and the last period of time that we're going to look at in the people's health unit is the modern period and the modern period really runs from the year 1900 until the present day and this is the time of modern towns that you might see around you in the places that you live. So people's health looks at four main periods of time, the Middle Ages, the early modern period, the industrial period, and the modern period. Now let's start with the Middle Ages. And in this video, I'd like to look at what the key features of medieval England were. And this is gonna be an overview of medieval England. Now, the Middle Ages, or the medieval period, you will often see in pictures like this. These are nearly all taken from manuscripts. And sometimes it's quite easy to make the assumption that maybe these people were a little silly and maybe they weren't as clever as we are today. Because these pictures often, to a modern eye, look a bit strange because the people aren't proportioned right and they're drawn a bit weird, if I'm honest. However, if you look amongst these pictures, you can actually see that these people were quite advanced and they were quite um, clever. In these images, just these images alone here, you can see that warfare was a major part of the Middle Ages and was a major feature of the Middle Ages. And you can see that in lots of these images. And warfare and technology around warfare grew quite advanced. In addition to that, Agriculture and the countryside was another key feature of the Middle Ages. And you can see that here with people on the left hand side cutting the corn in the field and the man on the right hand side plowing his field with a horse. At the same time in the Middle Ages, towns are beginning to grow. And in those towns, you get a lot of education, a lot of trade and education and trade are other key features that you often see. Also in these images, in particular in the image on the bottom right, you can see that religion was a very important key feature of the Middle Ages. So let's really focus in on those key features. Firstly, and I'm going to do this in three main slides, church was incredibly important to people in the Middle Ages. Almost everybody in medieval England was a Christian and people believed in God's goodness and they feared the devil. Almost every single person in medieval England was a member of God's church. And by 1250, the Roman Catholic Church in particular was incredibly wealthy and it was led by the Pope and his bishops. By 1250, almost every uh, parish in England had its own church, like you can see pictured here. And there were also cathedrals, abbeys, monasteries, convents. The church was everywhere. Power was also strictly controlled in the Middle Ages. At the top of that power structure and hierarchy was the king. And medieval people believed that God had put kings on earth to rule over them. Kings taxed their people. They demanded services from them. 
The medieval government was not like the government that we know today. It was not voted in or democratic. It was pretty much the king and his advisers, and they did far less for people than the government that we are used to in this present day. Now, in terms of this hierarchy, the king had a group of people under him. Those people under the king, this time, are mostly known as barons. And the barons were powerful people that controlled different parts of the kingdom for the king. The barons, in return, shared their land out to the knights. And the knights are those people that we've seen already in previous pictures. Below the king and the barons and the knights, at the bottom of this system of power and hierarchy were the peasants. And the peasants are the people who do the most hard physical work. They get stuff done. Most of them are serving the Lord by working in the fields and in return, they're often given a house and some land. And in the Middle Ages, over 90% of the people in the Middle Ages lived in the countryside. Third thing. Society was way more advanced than you might expect. Way more advanced. Although these people have very deep religious views and are strictly controlled within that hierarchy, they are much more advanced than you might expect. Technology is limited, but these people are not stupid. It's just they hadn't developed some of that technology that we rely on today. They had amazing technology for their time. They have water mills and plows and they were advanced builders. You can see that in medieval uh, cathedrals across Europe. England is also at this time not an isolated country. It is trading a lot. It's trading a lot both, both within the country and with Europe and the wider world. And the wool trade in particular was highly successful at the time. At this time, towns also begin to grow. And although really, even by 1500, there are only a small number of towns, those towns are very significant for English society and the country as a whole, because that is where a lot of trade is happening. They were crowded on market days and they were controlled not by a lord, but by a mayor and a council. So those are the key features of medieval England. And I think it's important that you consider about whether those key features we've just looked at helped or hindered, in other words, helped or stopped the health of the people. Some of those key features will have helped the health of the people. And some of those key features hindered it. If you want, it's probably a very good moment at this moment to make some notes about which of those key features you've just seen helped and which of those key features you think might hinder the health of the people.